How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another lead code question. Today our question is from Amazon and it's called intersection of two linked lists. Alright guys, today we're going over another question. It's called intersection of two linked lists. And again, this is a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. Our problem description says, write a program to find the node at which the intersection of two singly linked lists begins. For example, the following two linked lists. So we're given here list A, so A1, A2, C1, C2, C3, and then another list, list B, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3. We can see clearly, right, that they begin to intersect at C1. So visually it's very clear, right? Okay, these two lists A and B intersect at node C1, and so we're asked to return C1 because that's where the intersection starts. Great, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, did not mean to open that image. <laughs> Let's go to another example here just so it's super crystal clear, right? If we had A as our list here, 4, 1, 8, 4, 5, and the list B was 5, 0, 1, 8, 4, 5. Again, it's very clear from this image, right? Don't really pay attention to all this explanation. You guys can look at it and read it if you want to. But visually, it's very clear, right? These two lists intersect at this node that has value 8. Great. So we can keep walking through these examples. I think it makes sense. Let's just go over one more edge case kind of uh, example here, which is these two lists, right? A, 2, 6, 4, and B, 1, and 5. They actually have no intersection, so we just want to output null, it tells us. Okay, so again, if we have two lists, where do they intersect? If they do, we need to return the first occurrence of that intersection, right? Where those two, the node where those two lists begin to intersect. Um, and if they have no intersection, right, like in example three here, we would just return null simply. Great, so now they tell us we have a few different nodes. If the two linked lists have no intersection at all, return null. So that's the last example we just went over. If there's no intersection, we simply return null. It also tells us that the linked list must retain their original structure after the function returns. You may assume that there are no cycles anywhere in the entire linked structure. And it tells us your code should preferably run in O of n time and only use O of 1 memory. So I'm highlighting and harping on preferably because today we're going to do this in O of n time, but we're not going to do it in constant memory, so we're going to use O of n memory today. So if you guys have any optimizations or ideas how we can knock it down from constant memory, sorry, from linear uh, memory, right, to constant memory. I'd love to hear it in the comments, um, and maybe we could have a discussion there. But again, today we're just going to do O of n runtime and O of n memory as well. Okay, so how do we actually approach this kind of problem? So this is a, a problem that's similar to other things we've done on my channel and in other, other videos, but with numbers. Um, so we're trying to find the two, an intersection of two different things, right? So when we're finding the intersection of something, it's really useful to keep track of what we've already seen. Okay, and so typically when we want to keep track of what we've seen and we want to know what we've seen quickly, we could use something like a hash map or a hash set. So here, I think what we could probably do is keep track of one of the lists, right? What are all the nodes that we've seen in one of the lists? And then we can walk through the other list asking if we've seen any of those nodes before. So if that's still too abstract. Let's look at this first example in the prompt here. So if we took all of the nodes in list A and threw them in a hash set one at a time, right? So let's take A1, throw in a hash set, go to the next node, throw it in our same hash set, C1's in our hash set, C2's in our hash set, C3's in our hash set. Now we have all these nodes that we visited, right? We've visited every single node and recorded the, its occurrence in our hash set from list A. Now we can walk through list B and very quickly ask, okay, is B1 in our hash set? No. Is B2 in our hash set? No. Is B3 in our hash set? No. Is C1 in our hash set? Yes. Right? And so because we're walking through this linked list linearly, right, one step at a time, we know that the first time that there's an occurrence in our hash map from the other list, we know that that's the first node where the two lists intersect. So that's why we return C1 here. So if that's not super clear, let's walk through this other example here too. So list A, we're going to throw the entire list in a hash set, right? All the list nodes in a hash set. So 4, 1, 8, 4, and 5. And then again, we'd walk through the other list, B, and we'd ask for each of those nodes, are they in the hash set? Is 5 in the hash set? No. Is 0 in the hash set? No. Is 1 in the hash set? No. Is 8 in the hash set? Or I should just really say the node with value 8 in the hash set? Yes. So then we know, okay, 8 is the very beginning of our intersection. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's start writing that code. And the first thing we want to do is just populate our hash set with the entirety of one of the lists. And we'll just pick list A here because why not? So we're going to use a hash set. We're going to store list nodes because we're throwing all the nodes from one of the lists 
into this hash set and we're going to call this visited because we're effectively visiting all these nodes and this is a new hash set. Great, so now we actually just have to traverse one of the lists and that's as easy as saying wow head A is not equal to null, right? So while there's still nodes to traverse, we need to add to visited head A and then we need to move head A to the next node so that every single time we're moving, we're adding the next node into our hash set and not the same node over and over again. So we could say head A equals head A dot next. And now after line 18, guys, we've actually effectively created an entire hash set with every single list node in list A. And now we just need to start the process of walking through list B, asking sequentially, uh, sequentially if this node or the head node is inside of our hash set. If it's not, we move to the next node. If it is, we return that node. So now we just walk through list B. So we say, wow, head B is not null. Uh, if visited contains head B, Right, so again, if we have already seen this node and it's in our visited hash set, then we can simply return this node because we know that that's the first intersection between the two lists. And if not, right, so if it's not inside visited, then we need to keep asking that question for every subsequent node in list B. So we could say head B equals head B dot next to move it along. And finally, if we've created this hash set and after line 26, we've walked through the entire in the entirety of the head B, or sorry, I should say list B, then that means that there was no intersection, right? We could not find a single node in list B that was already in our visited hash set. So if that's the case, we can simply return null because that's what the problem asks for. So now to talk about our runtime, right? Well, what is our runtime here? We're going through every single node in list A and every single node in list B. So we can simply say that's O of N, where N is just the total number of nodes in both of our lists. And then in terms of our space complexity again, right? We have a hash set called visited. And in theory, this could be storing every single node uh, we have available, right? Because we could have, like, we're throwing every single list node in list A into our hash set. And in theory, we could have only list A, right? We could be given an example where list A is however long it is, and then list B is simply null. So it's in theory, or in the worst case, really, visited will be storing all of the nodes that were given in the problem, which would be O of N again. So again, the runtime is going to be O of N, and the space complexity is going to be O of N, where N is the total number of nodes that were given uh, between lists A and B. So now let's run this code, make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve intersection of two linked lists in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, the boy.